So let's, okay, uh, off the bat, did anybody have any problems with any of this stuff? Yeah, um, I, had a, I had a few kind of big problems, to be honest. Um, with, the, with the biggest one, honestly, was when I was reviewing the video on the, um, the coloring in of the um, Hellboy drawing. Yeah. Um, I couldn't see how you um, got the layer red and still kept the ink drawing on it. And like on the video, like it, the faces were covering that side, so I couldn't really see what was going on. So was so it? I, the, okay, go ahead. Yeah. So like I, you know, I I tried to do it, but I, I mean, you can pull it up, but I couldn't get just the, the the ink drawing with the the black and then the red right in the back as well. Uh, I don't have that one. I have the house one. Oh, I, I put a folder for Ian. There should be three. In there. <clears throat> I got the folder. There's only one file in it. Oh, well, I'm sorry about that. I'm at a new house, That's actually. That's fine. Just upload it. Yeah. yeah, let me just throw them up there real quick. <clears throat> All right. Um, Anybody else? Uh, I, I have a, the other one. Uh, I had a problem when actually actually doing the channels thing. Like I watched the video and I didn't have any questions when watching the video. That's why I didn't bring it up on Thursday. I was like, yeah, I get it. But when uh, I was actually doing it, I had a problem like with the levels. Uh, every time I would click levels, it would make a layer mask and not like a similar pop up to what you had. And then my alpha layer would conflict with the other. Uh, I think it was conflicting with the other uh, channel layers uh, because uh, it would make the image glow red when it was uh, not the only uh, layer visible. Okay, so you got <clears throat> you got through the whole process. So you're talking about the end when you're pasting it into a layer, right? Yes. Okay. Um, and then you made a layer mask. It should just drop it in, right? Yeah, but it wouldn't affect the alpha layer like no matter where like like i couldn't drag the layer mask between the other channels like i i could click off all the other channels and just have my alpha and my levels layer and then none of them like i could just blatantly mess around with levels and then it wouldn't show anything affecting like it wouldn't affect it, uh the alpha at all can you upload that file so i can take a look at it uh, sure. You can do it after Mike. class. I can address it tomorrow if you want. Yeah, I'll, Mike, I'll, I'll do that after class. Oh. Okay. Mike, yeah. I don't know why, but it's saying uh, 32 minutes for me to upload these two files. Right just let them right upload. I, just, I don't know what's going. They're probably huge is my guess. I, I just um, have really bad internet, I think, right now. But I'll let you know when they... There's something, I, I can you, uh, there's something going on with Google, too, because I'm having a bunch of problems with Google. And like, I can't go in and just go to the folder and, and tell it to download the folder anymore. I have to go in individually and download each one individually. And then I have yeah. to wait for them to sort of download before I can download the next one. It's a total pain in the ass. That's why I start downloading at like 6.30 in the morning, right? Yeah, for sure. So I, there's something going on with that, uh, Google. And I, I did it in Chrome, obviously, because I usually use Chrome. And you'd think that'd be the optimum thing to use with their product. But, it, and then I went to Safari and Safari, I could download them individually, but I can't batch download anything. And I, it might be because they're such big files, but to me, it's like, what's the point of having a cloud if you can't put big files in it, you know? Yeah, no, absolutely. I, yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm at a new house and it's just awful internet here, I, I believe. <laughs> um, it, it is, are you far from your um, router? No, I'm I'm pretty close. I've just really been having issues all the time. Because <laughs> yeah. I in this in my office here, because I didn't set this was a office I set up after this whole thing happened, you know, to go online or whatever. Yeah. Um, I had no. Uh, I mean, I I could kind of get internet once in a while in here, so I just had to get a booster. And ever since I got the booster, it's been pretty. Let me. Um. Oh, actually, I can upload it to the um the zoom chat if you can download that it's looking like it's going a lot quicker right here well that's weird well let's see that's yeah cool. 
Okay, yeah, there's something, on. something I'm, I'm missing here. Hey, John. Yes, sir. Okay, what are you saying here? Um, that I was describing what Ian was uh, talking about earlier. When you upload the videos, all of our faces from Zoom are covering oh. your layers and stuff. Yeah. So I haven't been able to figure out how to get rid of that. So what I try okay. and do, I don't know if you guys noticed this, but <clears throat> what I, when I'm going over to that side, I try and pull the whole window over because then that solves it, right? Yes, it does when you pull it out. But yeah, for that particular instance, it wasn't. I'm assuming there's some sort of uh, something of preferences where I can get rid of that. So I'll look into I mean, I meant to do that last week, actually. But I'll try and remember to pull those things out from now on. Okay? No worries. Thanks. Because I noticed it, too. And it's weird. It's like, I'm not asking you to put that there. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. It's one of those lovely Zoom talking. features. It is a crap, you know? Um, okay. I want to see my face. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't want to see mine, that's for sure. I don't even have a camera. Oh, you don't? No, I, I'm using a Cintiq. There's no camera, and they were all out, so I just never bought one. Yeah, it looks like that one got uploaded to the chat, if you can download it. Let me see. Oh, right here. Oh, it's only five megs. That's not that big. Uh, yeah, like I said, I think it's just, I'm in a bad spot. Okay, it's showing that it's downloading, so we'll see. Or it's showing that it's doing something. <laughs> I don't know what it's doing. Uh, but hopefully it'll, it's, it's going pretty quick. Um, okay. Uh, okay. By the way, if you guys get a chance, um, go, and if you didn't go already, if you didn't go to see that show, it, uh, I mean, if you're interested in that kind of thing, you should go see it. It's a really, it's a really good show. Okay. Okay, this gives me, let's open it. It's telling me I can open it, but I'm not seeing it. I think this is it. Okay, yeah, I got it. Okay. Okay, so let's look at this. I think you should be able to see my problem with it just not being read in the back. And that really just threw Okay, the everything. problem is here, let me share my screen. The problem is you paint it on your drawing layer. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you that's why I was telling you and Yeah, like the non So you're on look. If I turn that off and turn that off, I shouldn't have any color. You paint it on this layer. So once you paint on this layer, it's gonna affect everything underneath it. And it's also, this layer is also normal. It should be on multiply. You see that? It was multiply, okay. That's what it was that you did that. I, yeah. I didn't get how you had the red. All you gotta remember with, with the multiply okay. when you're doing this kind of thing, is that your go-to to get rid of the white. Okay, you gotcha. Okay. That it changed that. Okay. Yeah, gotcha. And then for drawing on it, so then just the layer above. You want to go when you're doing this. Um, Once it's been multiplied for the actual. For the color. You there? Okay, hang on. For the color, what you really want to do? Go ahead. I'm at, and we have the ink drawing. Um, yeah, just um, once once we're there with the multiply, how to which layer to do all the rest of it. You go underneath for your initial pass of color. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. if I go here, what you're doing is making a sandwich. So what I always do is I lock this layer off so I can't draw on it. And I go under it, and then if I need to do anything over it, which most have, if I might not, I might, I might not, then I'll put that layer over it. I never touch the ink layer. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay, I got you. So all it was, you just want to multiply. Yeah, okay, I got you. And this is the biggest one I had an issue with. Um, okay. But I definitely, now that changes everything, I'll be able to really work on it to, today. Yeah, just, just take a pass at it. Like, I don't expect, like, some super high level of finish. Just go and fiddle around with it a little bit. Yeah? Not for sure, yeah. Okay. 
because uh, I'll I'm gonna put these up as a um, as a <clears throat> as a packaged idea for under assignments, and it'd just be a ten point exercise thing. But I'm gonna do all three of them just as one thing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Got you. Hey, you guys. By the way, this and week. Then, um, go ahead. No, nothing. Sorry. Um, this week, I want to start going into going pretty heavily into color. Um, so hope I want to get these done for sure by tomorrow. Just be done with it, and then uh, I got. Um, I'm gonna probably go over something real simple in the morning. Then I'm gonna put something up tonight that's. Um, it first looks complicated, it's not. Um, and that's kind of gonna kick us off on sort of painting and that kind of thing. Does that make sense? And yeah. most of this stuff, <clears throat> cause some of you guys aren't painters or whatever. Um, I always do something myself that you can use if you want for the color exercises. For the one I wanna post tonight, I just found a drawing online, which I don't usually do when I do a tutorial, but it was in the middle of the last term and I was just long. But it worked out, it worked really good for that. Um, and what else? And then we're going to go into, we're going to get more and more into more complicated color techniques and things like that for painting. Okay. And eventually we're going to build up the sort of opaque painting. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. You guys can hear me, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. There you go. So let's look at this a little bit. Oh, that looks good. Oh, by the way, did you guys look at the um, uh, Paul Hussein video? No, did you post that? Mm -hmm. The one about the fur brushes? Yeah. yeah oh, that, yeah. That was really yeah. interesting. Yeah, okay, so, um, we can get more and more into that, but I definitely want you guys to, do you, have you guys started playing with that yet? Cause I need you to play with that. Cause you'll, you'll probably run into some problems and we can solve them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yes, I'll try it. Um, you want, you're going to probably have to go back to my video cause his video, he's just sort of showing what he does with it. When we talked about it in class, it's, there's a lot more on the steps on how to do that. Okay. And it's actually pretty simple <clears throat> and you're going to find that it's really, um, it's really useful. And like, if you look at his stuff, I mean, it's really, really useful. Okay. Not just for fur, but for all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this looks good. Mm -hmm. Thanks. This looks good. I like that. You warm that up, cool that off. Mm -hmm. I like that a lot. Thank you. Yeah. And that's good. Okay, good. Simple, right? I mean, once you get the hang of it. Yeah. What happened here? Hang on. I like your orangey sunset, John. So that looks oh this looks really good yeah i found that box of oranges and i was like i have no idea what to do with this but i'm gonna make it a sunset it's because i meant to go over something that day i'll go over it tomorrow it's no worries i was just having fun and it actually reminded me i didn't go over that so it's good oh okay i like this this all this down here on the bottom under the whatever you call it the tombstones i i tried to make them look less stampy so yeah, yeah threw in a little shadow threw in a little rim light whatever And what I would say here, if I was going to hit this a little bit, I would probably use a little rougher brush so it gets a little bit of like barky kind of texture. Okay. I sense? just, I literally just used a stamp on white and then a stamp on black and layered them. Yeah, but or you could go in on the white part or, you know, in between them and just get a real rough eraser and just kind of erase off the edge a little bit and kind of knock it all around. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I just went in and blurred. Pick up a little bit of that texture. It's kind of it's kind of a nice thing to sort of highlight. Yeah, I thought it looked a little stampy, but it was the project with stamps, so I didn't yeah, really yeah. bother too much. Yeah, I don't care about that. 
but yeah, that's a great tip. Thank you. But, um, well, you know, again, I know I'm broken record, but what we're trying to get to here is variety of techniques. So, you know, and you guys are already doing it where you're going, Oh, I added this and I did that. So you're starting to, you know, put things together in, in your own way and all that, which is my goal. Right. Yes. No problems with the, um, well, that's good. The only problem I had with my, um, I, I used the Bernie Wrightson drawing. I was trying to get a watercolor brush and that's the only reason I don't like that one because I couldn't find one in the nib. So I'm going to have to probably make your Oh no, there's a water, water there's a watercolor brush in your, the ones I gave you that those rusty nib ones. Okay, maybe I need to change the settings because it wasn't doing what I wanted. I wanted well, like a very I think like what they what they are is they seem to be at different percentages. So they go watercolor wash forty percent, watercolor whatever, right? Okay, okay, you know, I must I have been in the if wrong. I build section. them up; they're pretty nice. And okay, I must have been be, in the wrong section. You know what? I need to upload my grub brushes. I'll I'm gonna write a note. Uh, I'll try and do that today because I think I already have those separated. So okay. the grub brushes, there's a lot of them. Um. There, um, hang on. Um, this one looks really good. The Hellboy one looks really good. It's fun, right? Yeah, these are really fun. I even threw a little easel stamp on it. Oh, did you? Oh yeah. Yeah, <laughs> in the bottom. <laughs> I love this. I like the flamey, embery thing you got behind it, and like all these brush strokes and stuff. That's really cool. I totally just mimicked everything you did on this one. I know, I, but I this, used... this looks cooler than mine did. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> um, this core shadow is really nice. The way we went with that sort of nudity down, reddish con. That's great. And you didn't overdo it. A lot of people overdo that stuff. They push it too hard. <clears throat> I literally a, just did everything you said, so thank you. When you do a core, you want to be careful because like, like you did this one just right, okay? What happens is if you go too dark and it's a cylinder, it'll start to, what you're starting to tell the viewer is that it's real shiny, right? So if you're doing a tube that's chrome, yeah. that would be fine, you know? I'd put a real hard dark. <clears throat> I put a real hard light next to it and it, it would read as chrome. Right? Yeah, I did that only on his belt buckle and a little bit yeah. on the gun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All that's fine. But like this, this is important to me because this is one of those things because my thing with all this is I want to make sure everything's connecting to the real world all the time when we're working on things. So the reason I talk about core and I'm just basing this on my own information when I was learning that stuff at Fullerton, nobody was explaining to me what the hell it was or what I used it for. Does that make sense? Yes? No? Yes, yes, definitely. Um, <clears throat> and that was just my experience. You know, so I'm sitting in this room going, okay, I'm doing the core shadow. I don't know what it is. Like, what? It, I don't get what it is. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> or can you show me this in the real world? And I would have appreciated it. It's the, and I know I'm rambling again, but... I would appreciate if they would have went outside. We didn't have a library then, but something with a column and just said, see the core on that column? That's a core. It's, and then I can use it from a design perspective like you're doing here to, to separate the warm from the cool without it just, without just a big gradient where it starts to get mushy looking. Does that make sense? It gives it a little bit of solidity. Yeah, yeah definitely. I, I barely used any gradient on this one. Yeah, it was weird when I was like, you know, when this stuff was all sort of starting, and it's weird, I was watching a Craig Mullins video yesterday, and he's talking about being in Photoshop at like 92. And I, I thought Photoshop came out somewhere around 93, four. I didn't realize, and, that, and he was using it at all for art. It's like super crazy, really nobody was. They were a little bit later. <clears throat> but um, everything I saw, and the reason like when I was Imagineering, I didn't want to use digital stuff is because, um, everything was real gradient heavy. And I'm just like, I can't stand that look. I'm not doing that. You know what I mean? And I wasn't smart enough to go in there and go, well, it makes shades, just go in there and paint. But there also weren't Cintiqs yet and all that kind of stuff, you know? Yeah, definitely. And plus I was probably still being stupid about being a, a little bit puristy, which is really dumb. Oh, so you did a couple of these. Yeah, I, I always do extras just for fun. You know what's funny about this technique to me? 
because I've had students do this a lot where you look at it, you do this and then they just go, that's how they do that. And it's not that hard. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, I forgot to upload the one where I changed his cowl and gloves to match. I forgot. He was too pink. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. No worries. I just did more work on it. Well, there's but that's all right. This one. Yeah, that one. I, I made it more like the, like his design. The other thing I think is really good to look at this um, from a design perspective and go, you know, it's not like that it's so easy to do. I'm not saying that, but it's not as complicated as you think, but it's like, Look how good a good solid black designed thing is. It's just rock solid. Does that make sense? Yeah, those heavy blacks really help push oh the, the, I mean, the these, features. And, it, and it, I want that going through to people, going finish things out. You know what I mean? If you're going to tell me you're going to do this level of finish, you've got to sit down and do this level of finish. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can't this just a go, really good drawing. If you do something like this and you take it to this level of finish and the drawing's funky and all that kind of stuff, man, is it gonna show. It's gonna go amateur time right now. You know what I mean? Definitely. So if you're gonna do that, make sure, you know, you know, when you're saying something's finished, make sure it's finished. I saw this rights in one. That's cool. Isn't that yeah, cool? I yeah, I love rights in and I figured I'd try and do it on here, but I, I was a little disappointed because I didn't have as much watercolor effect to it, but it, it still came across. I think it's pretty cool. Thank you. And this guy's, um, I mean, that looks like a pro page, like a pro coloring job to me. Oh, wow. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, it, Wrightson's a beast. Oh, my God. It's weird. Like, <clears throat> are you on that Wrightson um, Facebook group? No, I don't think so. Okay, you should check it out because they post like a lot. Okay. Okay. And they posted okay. this one. That's where I saw it. This is a really nice job. Thank you. Like those greens, the way they change in the foreground and separate from all this craziness. You know? This one I actually used gradient so I could have that, that distance so the grass in the back is less colored. And There's a place to use gradients. It's like fine. You know yeah, I mean? this one was totally the one to use gradients. Hmm. Totally. I mean, if, I, if you were going with to, the, with the brush thing. <clears throat> it made the sky super easy to. I love the way it gets lighter down here. Yeah, that's what people, I was. A lot of people. That's what I was trying that. to do, and then I put a tiny one at the top to give a little uh, gradient of a, a darker purple yeah, yeah. color to match. Yeah, that's great. Just two gradients, boom, boom, sky done. Yeah, but what is that though? That's design, right? And that's knowing um, what to do, right? Like sometimes I'm showing people stuff, and like there was a kid who was in my class, but he was doing something for I think Bernard's class. And he was really struggling with it. And he's in another class of mine, but he was working on that stuff. And, uh, and he was really struggling with it. He goes, how do we do this? And I go, you just take the gradient, do this, do whatever. It took 10 seconds. And he's like, oh. And it's like, it's not that he couldn't do it. He just didn't know those couple of tools. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. It's just knowing. You know what I mean? 90% of this is just knowing. Like when you whip something out in a demo or something, and he goes, how do you do that? It's like, because I've been doing it for 30 years. You know what I mean? Yeah. You haven't. So, you know, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, And you know, you want to, that's why I'm such a big sketchbook guy. Cause it's like, you got to get in that damn sketchbook. If you want to really improve your drawing and your design and all that stuff, you know, that's where it really happens. And it doesn't definitely. matter if you're a graphic designer or whatever, it's all the same stuff. Hang on a sec. What is this? Oh, that's right. Okay. Hang on. I want to see if this one will work on here. Shoot. Get back here. Okay. So under here, I found some pretty good ones. Maybe this one. Yeah, so that one gets a pretty nice watercolor thing, right? Okay. Yeah, I must not have looked far enough. You probably you probably want, might have gone to one of the. Um, hang on. I think I was in brushes and it said water or something like that, but it was clearly not watercolor brush. It's under. Um, what's going on with this thing? Hang on. My brush won't come up. 
Oh, I know what it is. There it is. Um, hang on. Because <clears throat> if I took this, if I wanted to do this kind of thing, and I went, oh, my pen screwed up again. Hang on. Hang on. My whole computer's going wacky here. Hang on. Oh. Hmm. Seems like it's fixed. It's been doing this a lot to me. I don't know why. Okay. So I'm gonna put a little bit of color in this. Actually, yeah. If we wanted to go, it's gonna try this real quick. I don't want this, I want this. You know, and come in here and start to put some clouds in here. I might want to use this. Now it's also got, I haven't tried this, let's do this. I want to go a little lighter. Maybe a little lighter. There we go. And I know I'm overpainting it really well. And now I'm going to go a little bit lighter. I'm going to try their tool here. Yeah, I just went into my Photoshop and opened it bigger, and I see I totally missed that section. <laughs> it's under the Sumi A brushes. Yeah, I didn't even see those. I was looking under the nibs and brushes. I didn't even get that far. I think I had too many opened up. At they're, they're actually pretty good. Um, but let's go. I'm going to go back over here because there's a. Let's try this watercolor eraser. I don't know what that does. That's pretty good. A little more. Like as far as the, the ink brushes or the, the ones below it. And then I was. Yeah, the, the flats. I think that's as far as I made it, and I didn't realize there was more. So that was. Totally I didn't either at first because I didn't expect that in there. Yeah, yeah, there's a million brushes. Thank you so much for that. But they're really good. Okay, so there, you know, we start that. I usually use the other thing. I go in here again. You're going to see I use this one a lot. This one. Now I'm going to go up here and break up these edges a little bit. Kind of smudge those to get, you know, and I could put in some clouds pretty quickly, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, totally. And then I could go over this and go, I'm going to go back to my brush and only I'm going to put this on color. Let's see what happens there. And I could start to tint this a little bit. I'm going to do this on another layer. Hang on. I could start to give this a little bit of warmth. If you want to do that, get those like nice pinky clouds. It's a little, it's, it's a little um, much right now, but I'm going to go, I'm going to come back in here and go to, um, over there. Back up here. I'm going to go to this really watery one. And now I'm just starting to, see, I'm just starting to tint them with color. Does yeah, I just, yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, and then, you know, I could go up here and, and go start going a little more opaque if there was a, um, like maybe I'll sample this color down here a little bit, start to get a little lighter in value up here. You know, and then again, I'm gonna go back here, maybe knock that down a little bit. And you know, I can start to get some nice clouds. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. Three values, dark, mid, mid light, Go in and, and shape your edges a little bit. I use that one um, smudge brush because it breaks up the edge a little bit the way I like. And then I'll go in and soften a couple other words. If I go in there and just do everything soft, it's, it's going to look like a big um, cotton ball. Yeah. You know, they do look like they, they're sort of structured when you see them, especially like a big thunderhead or something like that, right? Yeah. And then if I do that, then I can go 
Let's block these two things together. I'm just going to collapse them. I could go, you know, do I pull it down here and put it, you know, behind the horizon? Do I make it bigger up here? Do I come down here, flip it? I don't know, maybe get them, you know, I put it behind the tree, you know, I can squash them, stretch them, add a little bit to them, and then I get a whole bunch of clouds without doing a lot of work. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. You can do it with a mouse, by the way. Okay, this is great. I like that. And I like the color scheme, too. Thank you. Tried to use my tertiaries. I was just showing my girlfriend, like, the, you know, like, triadic color relationship, quadratic, because she's afraid of color. And we're doing all this stuff for the house, and I'm like, <clears throat> this whole house for a long the whole house is monochromatic. You know what I mean? I'm like, let's get some pops of color in here. But she's like scared of color. Anyway, so I was showing her that and I go, look, you know, you can just go, I like purple and do a triadic relationship and you got a starting point, you know? You do the same thing with a painting. Okay. Yeah, that's where I broke my color with taking all those painting classes because I was scared of color too. I think everybody is. I mean, color's super complicated. Man, the color theory blew my mind. Yeah. The problem I had, again, with color theory, all this stuff shaped how we teach now, is I, I think I had one class maybe where they covered this a little bit, but it, especially at Art Center, you would just do endless swatches and stuff like that, and it was very technical, which I'm glad it was, but nobody ever said, let's go outside and paint and start applying this, because you have to sort of throw that stuff out the window a little bit and take a different approach once you go out, you know, and start doing things. Does that make sense? Yeah, Definitely. And, and it was all great stuff, but it was like, you need to connect everything to the real world. So to me, if you're doing a painting class, uh, color theory class, th then do some paintings. It doesn't even have to be outside, you know? I think I had one teacher got like objects, like a Tabasco bo uh, bottle and stuff like that. And we just painted them, you know, looking really hard at the temperatures and all that stuff. And that helped, you know? Mina, you didn't have any problems? Yeah, I took the color theory. You what? I took color theory with Todd a couple couple. Oh, Todd's good. Ago. Yeah, it was really fun. He he incorporates a lot of good stuff. Yeah, yeah, he's good. <clears throat> Where's Mina? Oops. Oh, right here. Sorry, thought my. Uh... Uh, this all made sense to you and everything? Yeah, I did. Um, I was having some trouble with the uh the sky and the tree with the channels um i wasn't able to get the 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 minutia of like the um horizon just right and so that was pretty much the only um issue that i came across uh but the uh, hellboy one was really fun to do i really liked that okay <clears throat> i'm gonna go over just real quick in the morning i'm gonna go over that channel thing just to hopefully i'll figure out as I'm going through it, I'll just do, you know, 15 minutes on it or whatever, um, just to make sure, because that's very important that you guys understand all that. Okay, and we're gonna do one more, we'll do a hair thing or whatever. <clears throat> um, so we'll get two doses of that. It's just gonna be important when you go into other classes, okay? So I'll just do a quick thing on it in the morning. Does that make sense? Yeah. <clears throat> okay, this looks good. Sound like you did a reverse core here a little bit. What's this one here? Now, how come that's reversed out? Oh, that's over it. Oh, I see what's going on. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. Did you go in and so did you go in and channel this out? Yeah, I did. Oh, wow. Cool. Because we talked about that just briefly, right? Yeah. Um, and I just wanted to get some more practice with that because I find that like really useful and I always come across with those types of issues so I figured might as well apply it to this one that one's actually come in handy for me a lot too especially when I've had to, I think I told you guys we had something we scanned it and for whatever reason I needed it separated like that nobody actually knew how to do it which is weird but um and it's a trick that I used when I first started digitally painting because <clears throat> uh, I would do my you know my design sketches or whatever and then I needed a way to go I didn't know you could just do multiply 
I need a way to um, have that floating on its own channel or on its own layer, you know? And sometimes you do need this, okay? I, you cut out for a second there. Oh, did I? Um, can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah? Okay. Yeah. I didn't say anything important. <laughs> I was just rambling. Yeah. Okay. yeah I can. Um, okay. Oh, I was going to show you this. Hang on. I'll, I'll put this with the brushes that I'm going to put up. I'll put this with it because I'd like you guys to know what that brush set is. Hey, Elan. Yes, Mike. So you used your watercolor brushes on that? On, on the Gibson, yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you like that? And we came out, with, uh, I'll look at it in a minute. But you, they, they worked for you? Yeah, they did. Okay, good. It was, it was like um, sketching for animators, illustrators, traditional media all over again, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's kind of the point, right? Yeah. Uh, okay, here we go. Let me find them. So the grub brushes are this kind of thing. Okay, now it stops. There it goes. <clears throat> They're sort of reactive and that kind of thing. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. They look cool. Yeah. So what it's going to do, it's going to do the same thing as the, uh, the smudge brushes did. It's going to go, these are tool presets because they didn't have the ability to do this before. And it'll, so it's going to go, I can import them as brushes. Do you want me to do that? Say yes. And then it's going to dump them into, like, just like the other, it'll be in a folder. Okay. You guys here? Yep. Okay. <clears throat> okay, good. Let's see. What else do I got? Nathan. Oh, I love this. Is Nathan here? Oh. You're here? I'm here. I'm here. I like this one a lot. I like that you went like warm in the sky. No problems? No. Okay, good. Yeah. No problems with your channel stuff? None of that, right? No, that was no. great. Okay, great. You know, you went to a different line art, which that's fine. The only problem with this kind of line art, <clears throat> are you there? Where's Noah? Oh, I'm right here. Um, is that you notice you, you, there's no, uh, let me see. There's really no shadow values in there, right? I mean, there's a little bit here, but does that make sense? Yeah. So what I would it may, do it, here, it, Yeah, it makes sense. So I would do here, I would come in here and go, I think this is a little dark here. I would probably knock this down. And then, there we go. Where this is going here. Oh, that's right. I'm gonna go up here. Well, let's go here. That's locked, okay. Let's go yeah. here. I'd probably go, you saturate that a little bit. But, and then I get some strong lights going on here, maybe a little brighter. Okay. And I'm wondering, this looks like it was like a, on like a crack like a, paper, right? Yeah, it looked like, it looked like it was on like parchment paper or something well, like that. I and I really do, like that. Yeah, I like that. But like when you get in here, you don't see it really. So what yeah. I'd probably do with this is I'd go and I'd totally desaturate it. 
then I'd probably go to my levels and go, take, this is the white balance tool right here, you guys, over at the right. Yeah. <clears throat> and I can go there. And now I got a stronger drawing to work with. It's a little less muddy, right? But the other thing I would do, I'm just going to leave that one like that for now. Um, <clears throat> the other thing I would do is I put a layer, I don't know, maybe here. Because there's no strong shadow values in here. So I might come in here, and I could do it with a brush, or I could just do it with a, I could do it with a lasso tool, I could do it with whatever. And I'm going to go back to multiply. I'm going to go to, I don't know, gray. Go a little darker. And let's say the light's coming from there. And I can start to paint in some shadows here if I want to do that. Just some darks. Okay. I just did a gray layer on overlay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So this layer, I got gray, I'm on this layer, and that layer is also on multiply because it'll just sort of, it'll pick up the shadow, it'll pick up the value under, or the color underneath, but give it a shadow value on, on the shadow layer. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. I don't like that soft brush for that particular thing because it means all my, um, what do you call it, all my shade, shading would be super um, soft edge, which I don't like. I mean, it can be here and there, but. You know, I could just come in here and I can start sort of painting in some nice values. That kind of thing. Okay? Okay. Just remember that multiply thing when it comes to this kind of coloring of sketches and finished drawings and ink and all that stuff, multiply is your friend. That's going to get rid of the white or with the gray, it's just going to make the gray value you pick, pick up the color underneath so you can do a quick shadow thing. Okay? That comes in really handy too when you're under time. Um, constraints. Okay. Pina. Yes. Um, where's your channel? Um, I think I neglected that. Okay, do that today. Okay. Should only take you a half hour, probably. All right, sounds good. This one looks good. Do you have any problems with it? That was a smart idea, putting the tree in front of the house to get more overlap. Um, no problems? Nope. Okay, great. Good. No problems with this, right? Yeah, just working on how to use my brush better with my finger on my laptop. I think that's pretty much it. Okay. What kind of laptop do you have? Uh, it's a MacBook, but it's been having problems. I've been looking into getting a new laptop soon, actually. Um, do you have a tablet? Um, like an like an iPad. Well, just like something you can paint on. No, I actually ordered something called like a Wacom last yeah. night. Which one? So the, got, the table. I got. One? Um, I'm not sure. It was like a. It was a medium size. It's in tools. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's what I was going to say. Um, okay. that, that'll be fine. Okay, sounds good. They're a lot more reasonable because this, this gear, this um, Cintiq stuff can get really expensive. Like, this one's not too bad. It's like 800 bucks. But, like, if you're a student, 800 bucks is a lot of money, you know? You guys hear me? My sound is completely dropped out. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's just the whole room just went super dead. I think it's my house actually. Okay. Let's see here. Pajan, where are you at? Oh, I'm here. Mm. Honestly, mine are not pretty. I just tried to get the basics down. I got the general gist of it. I don't so. care about pretty on this. I just want to make sure you understand it. Mm, I understand it. Okay, so this was not bad, right? This is fine. This yeah. guy, go ahead. Oh, nothing. I'll just agree. I might put like, 
again, I might come in here with, let me, with a, with a brush, a soft brush. Mm -hmm. Let me see. And we're gonna start talking about this a lot more this week, actually. I'm gonna get a big soft brush. I'm gonna knock down the opacity. I got it on color. See it up here? And I'm gonna I'm gonna pick this color here. Mm -hmm. Too much. It's weird. It's picking up. Let me see if I can do a different thing. I'm gonna try something here. I'm not sure because normally color will just go right over this. Maybe I did something wrong. No, you didn't do anything wrong. I'm just trying something. You didn't do anything wrong. I'm trying to find an overlay like that, maybe, where I can pull this down a little bit. And see, I'm just getting a oh. tint of that mm -hmm. sky color because mm -hmm. it's going to have some effect on that a little bit. I don't want to overdo it, but just give it a little kiss of color. Okay. Mm, that's pretty. Usually you can just do that with color. It's kind of weird. I couldn't, uh, it might be cause it's, um, yeah, it's probably just, I'm not working on the right layer or whatever, but, um, but I found one that works. So who cares? Right. And then I could, you know, come in here and let go. I want a little more of that maybe there mm -hmm. and then pull it down a little more. Like there maybe, right? Because we always want to make sure that our color that's in the environment is getting thrown around like it should. We've talked about this, where it's um, everything's in the same lighting. Does that make sense? Yeah? Ready. Elan, can you hear me? Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, okay, I just want to make sure you guys are hearing me. Uh, okay, so that's that one. And then this one, how can we have a lighter value over it? I just, I was just playing with the, okay. um, is it the normal overlay differences. Yeah. That looks scarier, so I just went with that one. Ooh. I like these like little, like that. Mm -hmm. Kind of cool, right? Mm -hmm. So I was just playing with those. Yeah, that's fine. Stop with that one. Yeah. Okay. So stamp brushes, no problem, right? Mm -hmm. And I need you guys to get in there with those reactive brushes, okay? That's going to become more and more important. It's really going to be important for you guys after you leave this class because it'll save you a lot of time, okay? Okay. And then I'm missing, I'm missing my ink drawing, right? Hey, Mike, can you send a link to those? To what? To the what? You're cutting out. The ink drawing? To the, the ones that I, g I gave you last week? Uh, no, you said, sorry, um, this is probably for, we got confused. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, can you hear me, Mike? Yeah. Oh, uh, a link to the reactive brushes, the one you just showed us. I'm going to today. Oh, okay, cool. So it's Thank going you. to be a big, it'll be a zip file. It's going to be a lot, but um, whatever. You'll go through them and go through and just play. Oh, and you know what else I'll give you? I'm going to give you Greg Rutowski's brushes. He's the guy that does this stuff. Or Rutkowski, I always forget his name. Because I have those separate. Hey, uh, Mike, do yeah. you think for the, the cylinder, sorry, uh, do you think for the cylinder on the Hellboy drawing, um, you could use the gradient for the like, change from the cool to warm? Uh, on that uh, Hellboy thing? Yeah, sorry, you were cutting out for it. Yeah, I know. Yeah. You were too. But I think what you're saying is can you use a gradient for that for that, right? Yeah. Uh you could try it. What I what you know, I mean yeah, you could. Yes. You know? 
And, and, and by the way, a lot of times those inkers will put in the core shadow for you, so you don't even need it. Okay? Yeah, gotcha. It just depends. It just depends on every piece. Yes, you could use a gradient for it, absolutely. And you could just have it go from warm to cool, okay? This guy, I think I've already showed you guys this guy. This is Greg Rutowski, so I'll give you his brushes too. Or Rutkowski, I always get it wrong. So his stuff is super painterly, see that? Oh, that looks cool. Right? Okay, so nice. this is, by the way, this is sort of what we're gonna start getting into in the next this week and next week, okay? Sounds good. Um, but I'll get and the other thing I'm gonna give you with the Rutkowski brushes, uh, it came with two videos of just his whole painting process. Okay, which is oh, basically cool. just, it's basically just painting, right? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's awesome. It's not a lot of tricky stuff, okay? It's pretty mm -hmm. simple, straightforward stuff. Um, we're going to start more with some mapping stuff, some, uh, you'll see. We're going to build up into that kind of thing. But like if this kind of thing, if you like this kind of thing, hang on. My guess is this dude came from traditional, right? I mean, that looks traditional. Does that make sense? Um, yeah. He has some really cool, like this. Look at this one. It's cool, man. And I love these, like this one. That is hard to tell that's not oil. Yeah. Wow. Really? Okay, so I'll give you his brushes too, because I like I said, I already have those separated, so I don't have to separate them. Um I think I got my smudge brushes separated. I'm gonna give you grunt brushes. I gave you the rusty nib brushes. I'm gonna give you Rakowski's Rakowski's brushes and the videos. I usually don't talk about the videos until later, but you might as well start looking at them now. Mm -hmm. Um so that's that. Okay. Let's go. Mike, I have a question. Yep. Did, did you just did what? Just oh, there, yeah, because for some reason my brush smudge brushes. The smudge brushes did what? Oh, a second time. That's what I thought. No, I have a, a folder that says smudge brushes two, and then the the stamping trees and stuff. Yeah, I had. The I guess problem. that's okay, right? Well, because I couldn't tell whether it was dial or not, so I've I had oh. seven of those. <laughs> seven okay, of what? The smudge brushes folder, and it was the exact same Name. folder yeah. because I accidentally downloaded it like seven times. <laughs> but you got it right. I, 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 I have it and I've used it, but I accidentally had it way more than I probably should have. Yeah, I do that. Everybody does that. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. This one's cool. Who, where's Victor? Victor here? Yeah, I'm here. I love this. What do you think? Wow, that's cool. Victor, what do you think? Yeah, I like it. I think the uh, the haystacks probably needed a shadow. Yes. But other than that. I think these could just do this, what we talked about. Like that. <laughs> That's all it needs, right? You there? Yeah. You just need to lower the value, that's all. That's nice, this looks great. Wow, this looks really good. Okay, are you there? Yep. Right here, can you hear me? Oh, okay, now I can hear you. That, that piece looked great, dude, yeah? Thank you. Okay, good, you got some streaks in front of it, cool. Be careful here, the cool's going a little further over. I, I erased that out a little bit. 
Did this, did this make sense too, the ink? It was a little difficult. What was hard about it? Well, working really loosely in the beginning felt sloppy. Yeah, okay, that's a good point. Um, I'm always after loose, just like that guy we just looked at, Rakowski. Um, but it's hard to do, you know? It, it, it looks like it's easier, but it's actually harder. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, when you take those classes and they go, type pencil render. I remember when I got that at Florida, so I'm like, bam, I nailed I that. that. You know what I mean? It was that loose stuff where I'm like, how do you do that, you know? And you do that by drawing, painting, drawing, painting, drawing, painting, drawing, painting, all the time. Okay? What's your major? I'm animation. Oh, okay, good. Have you taken any of that yet? Yeah, I've taken Maya with Frank. And okay, Zebra. Great. Well, now take his um, 2D and 3D classes. We're supposed to have a full-time animator on staff pretty soon. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. We're, I'm on the hiring committee for it, so we're supposed to. We're actually supposed to interview him this summer, or them this summer. Okay, no problems with this? No, nope, that was actually pretty easy. Okay, good. Now we got to get into those more complex brushes, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. And then, okay, good. Where's Elan? Right here, Mike. Ooh, that looks good. No problems? So far, no problems. Yeah, that looks good. Problems. Yeah, that looks good. That looks good. See what this does for me when I do stuff like this. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. It just gets me all turned on to go. That's the level of finish you got to get to where it feels worthy of being painted. We talked about this in illustration, right? Yeah. Um, that's one of the things that people have a hard time overcoming is like finish. Like they, you know, in that class, you remember this, a lot of times people bring me drawings and go, I want to use this. And it's like, it's not finished. It's yeah. Not worthy of being painted yet. You know what I mean? Right. <clears throat> now it can be a super loose finish. That's fine. But it's got to feel finished. I mean, there was like, when Alex was working on that one thing, and he ended up solving it and doing a good job. But when he's first mm -hmm. doing it, he gets to the, the, like the feet and I go, how are you going to fix that? That's the mushiest foot I've ever seen in my life. You know, where are the shoelaces? Where's the, you know, there's no, there's nothing there. Like, how are you going to paint that? You know yeah, I mean? exactly. You need to kind of definitely know where everything is and have a clear path. Otherwise, if you don't know what you're painting, then that's not, it's not yeah. strong. It, if this is not a strong drawing, it's not going to be a strong painting. So exactly. if you got, if you start <clears throat> with a lousy drawing, you're going to end up with a lousy painting. I don't care how many, and people do this. I see it all the time. <clears throat> they do these, these, um, you can hear me, right? Hang yeah, on. I can hear you. Um, they do these super laborious painting techniques that take a month or whatever. And, um, you know, and they think that's going to like save the painting, but all that does is just highlights what a crappy drawing you started with. Does that make sense? Yeah. You know, so you just go, why'd you spend 40 hours on that painting when the drawing sucks? And then mm -hmm. when you paint it to that level of finish, it just emphasizes that it sucks. Like all the misproportion things and all that stuff, it just looks so bad. Yeah. So, it just magnifies it. <laughs> yeah. It magnifies it. And it also, and just to my opinion, it also just makes me go, dude, you're an amateur, man. That just looks amateur. Like, don't do that, you know? Get your drawing skills together. But they want to make the big fancy painting. We all do. <clears throat> but it's like, get your drawing together. Otherwise, it ain't going to work, you know? This looks great. Yeah. Oh, really thank good. you. And what I like about it is, like, when I did a demo on this, the first time I used these drawings, I just couldn't figure out where to go with it. And I think this is kind of you and uh, somebody else did this one. Uh, I think you guys came up with a better solution, which is this sort of washy, watercolory kind of feeling. Does that make sense? You can hear yeah. me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I like the little 
pinkishness on the cheeks and stuff like that. This is good. <laughs> Thank you. This guy was a monster, by the way, right? Gibson. Yeah, he's. I always look at his um, pen renderings. So, <laughs> look at hair. You want to look? Know how to draw hair? Go look at Gibson. He breaks it yep. down. It looks super complicated and it's super simple. That mostly my. A reference of hair is from his drawings. So yeah, if you look at it, I think we've talked about this too. It's a bunch of cylinders, really. Yeah. The way he mm -hmm. draws it, the way he handles it. Um, by the way, if anybody's going to be in my illustration class or my traditional media class next term, because I'm going to talk to Camille about this today. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. If you, if anybody's going to be in either one of those classes, then you you might want to talk to me and go. Because I can tell you what the first project is, and you can start the drawing now, and I can start critiquing it now. So when you go in, it's like, I got a drawing ready to go. Does that make sense? Sweet. Yeah, sweet. Um, awesome. Because I want that level of finish. Okay. Yeah. Do you want me to just email you? Yeah. Okay. What are you taking? Are you taking um, traditional media? Uh, no. You were in traditional media, right? Uh, no, illustration. Yeah, oh, illustration. illustration. Yeah, yeah. Taking your illustration. So we're gonna do video. we're gonna do a, a watercolor. You know, uh, I usually do children's book one. You already did that one. So if you want to give me an alternate um, project, tell me. Okay, I still want it to be watercolor. But if okay, you want to do sounds good. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have to be children's book. Maybe you go. I want to do something from this. Whatever. Just let me know. Okay, and we can work. Okay. On it. And that way we can get that done by the time we Sweet. go and ready to go. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, for it. Thank you. Any other questions on any of this stuff? Okay, well, hang on a sec. Hang on. Uh, gotta go to my channel. Oh wait, let me get some. Then next week, maybe next week we can get in some 3D stuff. Okay, hang on. Come on. I'm just pulling this up so I can talk about what we're doing tomorrow. Went over the set. So we're going to go here. Okay, it's back in. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah? I like this project because it looks complicated and it's easy. So what I'm gonna do, uh, that's an Aaron Liminick drawing, by the way, he did a, it's a really nice one. Um, I'll put, I'm gonna put a video, this video up tonight um, and the file for it, because this file actually works really good for it. Um, and then we're going to go through it, and this is how we're going to start kind of our painting and coloring idea, more complex, complex version of it. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. I don't care. I, I don't expect you to do anything by tomorrow on this because I, I need to go over it a little bit, but I'm going to give you the video so you have, we have something to discuss. I'm going to go over some mapping stuff in the morning, and, and we'll get started on this, and then we're going to go into different varying um, uh, color techniques and things like that, and then build up to sort of opaque. Does that make sense? Yes. Well, I got a bunch of stuff I got to put up for you guys today right after this. Um, and I think there's a little bit of opaque in this, in this rendering. 
or painting or whatever you want to call it. Um, questions? Oh, you guys are good about questions. Mm -hmm. Everybody should want to do that. I think anyway. Hell yeah. <laughs> yep, that's the goal. <laughs> uh, getting a, you know, paint traditionally, man. Like, I don't know how you know how to do this stuff if you don't paint traditionally. I don't get it. But I don't know. Maybe other people do. Who knows? Yeah, um, totally. It's definitely like an oil, like you said. Yeah, I mean, I, if you told me I was an oil, I'd go, okay. You know what I mean? There's not really a whole lot that gives it away as digital. There's really not. Usually I always find something where I go, oh, there it is. Yeah, I can see that brush repeating or whatever. But I don't really see a lot of that in here. Maybe if I saw it bigger, I'd see it, but I don't see it here. Um, okay, does all that make sense, what we're going to start going over? Yes. Yep. Okay, um, and you'll see... Because sometimes I show that canyon thing to people and they're like, they get overwhelmed by it. And it's like, it's actually super simple. Mm -hmm. um, is that going to be just a drawing or is it already colored when you give it to a no, it's, canyon? No, it's, it's just a drawing. Okay. And then we color. It. Okay, got it. And what, um, the reason I'm doing that is obviously I don't have time. Like I'm doing for another project because I, okay, so last term we were, you know, we, this all happened, right? Or was it last term? This term. God, I don't even know where, no, last term. Last term. Yeah. It seems like that seems like five years ago. It's super weird. Right. Um, <laughs> anyway, so this happened. So we were all sort of scrambling to get things. So I, I did the not this painting or this canyon thing. Um, I mean, I did that one too because I, I was going to do a drawing for it. Then I found that. And I go, good, this will save time. It's at five classes and I'm trying to do all this stuff. But then the next one, which is a little more advanced version of that. I don't really like using other people's drawings if I'm gonna do a tutorial. I don't mind doing it in a in-class demo because it just speeds things up and that's fine. But if I'm doing a demo, I don't like using those. So the next one I did a quick drawing for that, but then I'm like, okay, I, don't, I did that rendering really fast. I, I wanna redo it. So now I'm making a new file for that so you can use that. And, but when we get to that, I'll tell you what else you can use. You can use my file, you can use something you find, I don't care. Or use something on your own if it's finished enough. It's gotta be really finished. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll have that by, I'll probably finish it today or something. Um, what else? So that's where we're going. We're going to start heading into color, okay? Good. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think, again, it's super important. I also think it, it'll give you, um, hopefully, if you haven't had digital painting, it'll probably give you some confidence with that. They might show you a totally different technique, and that's fine. Um, but I think it'll give you a little confidence going into that. If you've had digital painting, and we're going to talk a lot about brushwork and things like that and how we accomplish this kind of thing. I mean, this is all about brushwork, correct? Yeah. I mean, this is all about brushwork, okay? Uh, and, and again, the brushes I'm giving you are his brushes, or one set. Brushes are the other ones. And then uh, and I'll link this guy on, um, on Canvas. I'll link him on Canvas. I'll link the brushes on Canvas. There's something else I have to do. I'll link the video on Canvas and I'll link the file download for that Canyon thing. Is that good? Okay, so tomorrow we're starting to actually jump into color. Yeah? Good. Cool. All right, you guys. Nice. Love to see you in the morning. Thank you. All right, and I'll go, over, you, I'll go over that channel thing real quick in the morning. Cool. All right? All right. I don't Thank have any work you, for you guys. I just want you to watch a video and get thinking about it. Got it. Okay, you guys. I'll see you. Great job, time. everybody. Thank you, John. All, All right. right guys. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, Bye, Mike. Everyone. See you later.